The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. If you have any questions, then I can uh, choose uh, to talk whatever thing you like. So it is. I thought it is better. Um, good morning. Um, can we talk about vijnana and how what it is the concept of it and how we can use it? Yeah, it, it is a good uh, question. So, uh, according to the Lord Buddha's teachings, vijnana is explained uh, in. Uh, we we say in English when we are explaining in English, we can say it is consciousness. But consciousness is not only one thing; it arises depending on causes and conditions. Causes and conditions, uh, external, uh, if we explain in uh, according to the Salayatana Vibhanga Sutta, so Lord Buddha say there are uh, external faculties and internal faculties. So consciousness, in according to this way, we, we see the conscious, we can understand consciousness is not one thing. There are, uh, consciousness means there are six uh, types of consciousnesses are here in, in, in a human uh, body and mind. That means a human, uh, for a human, we can say there are uh, six types of consciousnesses. Uh, this, uh, these consciousnesses arise momentarily, depending on causes and conditions at that moment. So these uh, consciousnesses are explained by the external six sense bases and internal six sense bases, because these uh, external senses and internal senses, consciousness arise. When consciousness is there, the contact happen, and then contact happen, the uh, forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions arise. So the consciousness. Uh, for internal sense basis is based on eye consciousness, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These are the sense bases. The external sense bases are the, uh, uh, the, the forms come to your eye, the, that is uh, sounds come to your ear, the smells come to your nose, taste come to your tongue, and uh, uh, touches come to your body. So. That is external sense basis. Internal sense basis is eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. The, the, external, the thoughts come to your mind is the external sense, and mind is internal sense. So this, this is how, when, when these internal sense bases are existing, uh, and the external sense is also existing, then the my consciousness arises. That is how it explained because uh, mind, according to the Dhamma, mind adverting the five senses and mind sense. It is a part. It is the. It is a natural process. So when mind is adverting five senses, the consciousness arises. If it is not adverting the five senses, five sense consciousness don't arise. In the same way, when the mind adverting mind sense, mind sense arise. Otherwise, it is not arise. That is the consciousness never arise. That is the, the according to Dhamma. This consciousness ever never arise if it is not adverting by the the underlying the mentality. That means the the, the, the bhavanga chitta. If that is the it is it is a part of the existence because the a part of the existence uh, there is a consciousnesses are flowing but the, these consciousnesses are not uh, we say as the consciousnesses we normally associate it that means the conscious mind and subconscious mind we can explain in that way so that's why the uh, bhavanga chitta always running that is bhavanga means it is a part of existence so consciousness the, this vijnana arise the if we take an example i consciousness arise when i 
is uh, adverting, the mind is adverting the eye. So then the eye consciousness arises. Be because there, is a, there should be an ex external object, an internal mind faculty, the, the eye faculty. So when eye consciousness arises, the contact also arises in the moment because it touches, it contacts the external object and then the forms, feelings, perceptions and volitions arise accordingly. So that is how eye consciousness happens. In the same way, ear, nose, tongue, body also happen. In the same way, mind consciousness also happen. Because the, if a thought comes to mind, that is external object, and the mind consciousness arise, mind consciousness grasp it, and then the, that called the contact. Contact happens, then the forms, feelings, perceptions related to that, the, their mind arise. So Lord Buddha say this uh, consciousness actually without forms, feelings, perceptions, there is no consciousness. The, conscious, uh, pa the consciousness defined by forms, feelings, perceptions and volitions. In the same time, the, uh, uh, we have to understand this, this is a phenomena. It is not a fixed thing. It is not something fixed to your body or mind. It arises depending on causes and conditions. The internal uh, sense bases are always associated with the karma, your past uh, uh, volitions, past, past intentions are always uh, associated with the, with the uh, internal sense bases. So that's why when uh, the consciousness arises, it always have a some sort of a uh, uh, quality related to your previous intentions. So that's why the consciousness always uh, based on the avijja pacha sankara sankara pacha vinyan like that consciousness arises because your your previous intentions, your consciousness arises. So that's why the, when you contact an object, when the mind contact an object, always there is a, a feeling and perception and then volitions. All these things based on your uh, past, uh, past conditioning. Yeah, that is true. So that is called karma. So consciousness, we have to understand in detail. Consciousness is not a one thing, and it is not a fixed thing. It arises depending on causes and conditions, and it passes away, and another arises, pass away. This is this is how this uh, mind works. This is consciousness work. If we understand consciousness is a fixed thing, that is Lord Buddha say it is a wrong view. It is a part of a phenomena. I've been listening a lot to Ajahn Brahm, and one of the things I'm um I've been sort of going through in my life is like we fear is instilled into us from a very young age. So how does the Buddhist philosophy actually teach us? Uh, how how what what's the philosophy around how do we deal with fear? How do we yeah. live life fearlessly without anxiety? Could you sort of just elaborate on some of the strategies and techniques? Yeah, actually, the, this is uh, also understand. We have to understand if we understand our body and mind is a natural phenomena. So this this is what Lord Buddha taught us. This is how Lord Buddha um, uh, explained our existence. This body and mind. How this body and mind exist. How these things are working. So if we get an understanding about the Lord Buddha's teachings. Uh, then you uh, you have an idea about what is going on inside me. So how this mind arises, how these uh, emotions arise within ourselves. So if we have this understanding, you are not much worried about what is going on here. So then you 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 can uh, uh, you can keep a distance to your emotions when it arises within your heart. So you can keep a distance because you know this is this is a natural phenomenon. I don't have a control on these things. Whether your mind 
caught up by these emotions and then your behaviors also uh, run in such a way you don't you do not much worry about it that is the most important thing to uh, to overcome these mental states then you can consider it without without a fear or worrying about these things because worrying uh, make you more uh, the worrying is a basically say we can say it is a, the unskillful so this unskillful mental states you can overcome if you have this understanding if you bear this understanding if you use this understanding that means the lord, how lord buddha um, uh, explain about this uh, body and mind how uh, the way how it works so then we admit this is nature this is the reality because our mind is always uh, uh, run by the the past conditioning so we admit it and past condi- conditioning is not the only uh, reason arise in the present moment because the past conditioning is one one side but the past is not a fixed thing it is always updating this present moment whatever thing you experience update the next moment next moment past is included the present moment also can you understand that so if you have this understanding then you you don't worry about your karma karma is not a fixed thing it is always updating it is always renewing so if you uh, uh, cultivate this if you if you always follow the wholesome mi- mentality or if you have the understanding about uh, the how your mind and body works then you you don't worry about it because it always run by the past karma so you you keep it you don't without worrying without worrying is a is a wholesome mind so without uh, having the, un- the, the that means you are present moment if you know this is run by delusion and uh, no need to worry about this we don't have a control on these things then you don't worry this not worrying mind is wholesome mind then you don't expect anything from the, the present moment whatever thing happen in your mind it is wholesome mind then this wholesome mental state start growing then this wholesome mental state supports to the the, the, the later mentality so you are more much more comfortable on whatever thing happening within yourself so then you rely on these wholesome mental states and start growing on these start growing these wholesome mental states so that is the the nice experience you get if you always worrying about your past then always the worrying mental state arise because it is become your karma when you because when you understand this whatever thing happening within yourself is a is a uh, the uh, arise this mental state because causes and conditions we don't have on a, a control on these things this is natural phenomena if you bear this understanding in mind you can uh, uh, maintain your mentality without involving this process you see oh yeah i don't have on you don't worry not worrying is a wholesome mental state not expecting better is is a is a wholesome mental state so you can leave it alone this wholesome mental state supports to the later the the consciousnesses arise in in later time so if you if you keep trust on these things then it start growing the wholesome mental state so that is how it it happen within ourselves so that's why lord buddha says sometimes if you can maintain a different mentality different perception whatever happening here it is it is helpful to uh, avoid uh, the unwholesome mental states that's why lord buddha says this all these perceptions arise because our past uh, conditioning past uh, um, uh, intentions we had early that's why lord buddha say you you have to follow the wholesome intentions or wholesome uh, intentions and and the wholesome uh, uh, perceptions if you practice the wholesome perceptions it is helpful to subside the unwholesome perceptions 
this is this is how very very uh, good to understand this kind of things that's why the uh, this uh, impermanent nature non self nature these things you have to uh, keep in mind and associate with these perceptions so it is it is helpful to to abandon the unwholesome mental states so then you you see the value of uh, wholesome mentality and then you can uh, avoid this uh, unwholesome the emotions yes sir i'd like to comment to what you said pande uh, the fear is same as anxiety isn't it yeah. anxiety the fear is uh, because uh, uh we if we think we are a separate self sakadity mm -hmm. the preservation of this self is the biggest fear so uh, if you think there is a separate self say if you are confronted with something uh you are fearful because what is going to happen next mm -hmm. so if the mind is in the present moment there is no time for fear to act on you so fear is what is next so if the mind is at the present moment fear doesn't come at all and also if your uh, view of separate self is not there fear doesn't there is not there at all yeah yeah fear arises because the, the we i am existing in future that concept so actually the, if you understand this is a natural phenomena and i don't have a control on this thing so then you don't worry about it you just let it be if you think that i have a control on this thing that is the problem so then only thing the wholesome mental states subside the unwholesome stuff so the the unwholesomeness come to us because we think we have a control on this this uh, forms feelings perceptions arise within ourselves that is that is the base of sakayaditi so if you remove the root because we can introduce sakayaditi but people don't believe people don't practice it we can talk about sakayaditi but the, if we doesn't remove the root it never uh, the, the disappear always we use it so that's why the, we have to understand this body and mind is a natural phenomena it is natural flow our forms feelings perception arise because our past conditioning so we don't have a control we don't no need to worry about this thing we can't go beyond this one. so then we accept the reality and don't worry about it this not worrying mind is the helpful mind to let go things then no then you can have a chance to understand things what is unwholesome and what is wholesome how this this emotions arise within ourselves keep a keep a gap keep a distance that is the important thing so we take once we take it no oh, this is myself then start worrying this is a natural phenomenon <laughs> so uh bonte thank you um so the 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 notion i'll just go back to the first question if i can um so the notion that the thoughts are the external uh effectively external objects of the mind is yeah. very interesting um but then coming to the last question so if you know the thoughts that arise um uh thoughts of fear or anxiety or, or whatever um to viewing them does it help if we think about them and do we view them as well these are just external objects that are impacting upon the mind and as if i understand what you're saying correctly is that these uh, objects will just then come and go is that a correct way of practicing to uh to undermine the intensity of the thoughts yeah actually these thoughts come to your mind because you have taken early or it is come in one way or the other because the thoughts directly come to your mind means you have taken this kind of uh, the, the the base the, the objects related to the thoughts so that's why a lot of this these are 
you have to you can consider as external then you can leave it alone let go things if you if you think it is a part of your mind then you are naturally caught up by the thoughts you can't keep a distance keep a gap thoughts when thoughts come the thoughts are not a fixed thing in your mind it comes and when you understand about the thoughts or oh, this is a thought then you can keep it alone if if the thoughts are uh, the mind is driven by the thoughts then it is a different state of mind so if you understand or oh, this is a thought arise so then you can leave it alone so it is a thought yeah. there is a distance gap so that's why it, it, it you can take it as external Uh, if not, you know, it can be difficult sometimes in our lives to leave things as external. Is it helpful or is it wise to try and understand if it's something fairly um, strong, where it may have come from in terms of our past experience? Would that be wise reflection? To to try to understand. Yeah, yeah. It it is a, it is a past because this consciousness we have the, according to Dhamma we have to understand consciousness. If the consciousness work, it runs by the delusion. Bec- that's why the forms fe- the feelings perceptions forms feelings perceptions arise in mind because delusion. So if we uh, understand any object come to your mind in that way. we can just let it go sure. because that is the important thing the lord buddha say this consciousness arises because delusion so if we value all these forms feelings perceptions that's why we suffer because the delusion means you don't consider these things are impermanent and these are not mine myself this is a natural phenomena if you keep in mind these things you don't value any of these things you just let go this consciousness just just because this process is um, this uh, um, dependent origination is a is a part of this process all consciousnesses are run in the same way so it always is like if if you think consciousness is a is a part of a computer this computer program is always always program based on delusion so always it gives a value to to whatever the, this consciousness means if there is a perceptions uh, feelings perceptions at least there if there is consciousness feelings and perceptions are there so th- those feelings and perceptions are totally come from the delusion so that is the that is the base of the thing so if you understand because this feelings and perceptions say i know i i know this is this is the this is how i feel but these are not permanent things and these are always conditioned when the conditions are changing these feelings and perceptions also change so these are not permanent things the, the your consciousness is always run by the causes and conditions when the causes and conditions change these feelings and perceptions also change yes, I, th- i was going to ask is, isn't it the matter of changing your perception somewhat that yeah the, that's why lord buddha say this perception is, is a mirage you can play with these perceptions <laughs> ultimately lord buddha say no value of any of these perceptions vachya vijnana vijnana vachya nama roopa this nama roopa is come from the delusion <clears throat> playing with perceptions so that's why lord buddha say then you can see how it works so they, that's why they, once you cut off these percep- value of these perceptions first you let go of the five sense world perceptions yeah. and uh, the consciousnesses then you can release from five sense world and go to the mind world once you go there then you see how these five senses arise once you come back how these five senses arise how these, these things are working once your mind the release from the the five sense world so it can totally go to a different realm of existence so now now uh, okay now i i can tell you the, the now the the scientists are doing research work on these things 
they 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 say the NDs, they how they they, they term these things. When you go uh, the, to the outer body experience, the NDs, they say the, these people the, totally their attitude towards this life or their the habits and uh, their their uh, how they take the world is totally changed. They 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 don't have any other option. Once they go to ND and come back, they, he he's a, a different person. All all people who experience these NDs have the same uh, understanding about this life. They they don't worry about the the positions and the the wealth and all these things. They just let go. They kind for all living beings in the same way. This is a very strange thing for scientists because they they see oh this is something very special for all the in in the experience people. So that is what Lord Buddha say. You have to attend jhana, then you know what is really happening here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Bhante, just um, sorry to, to keep going around in circles. <laughs> um, so, I think, you know, say so go back to fear, for example, though. Sometimes those emotions are, are very, very strong, very hard to let go of. Now, mm. I think what Cora was suggesting was, was saying was that when it is something so strong and you find it really hard to put down, does it help? to try and understand and un un unpack that, you know, what, why is it that I feel like that? Or alternatively, is it in fact from a practice point of view more useful to just uh, adopt and reflect upon the fact that this is transient, that this will change? Um, what, is the, what is the best way in which one can break down, you know, something which is actually dominant in the mind? How do you, how, when you can't just, just let it go, how can you how can you break it down to a, a allow yourself to let it go? Yeah, actually, it, it is a good question because sometimes some uh, some mental states arise because uh, if you if you clearly understand if you analyze this one you see some in some instance you take this is happened to me or some something you take as I me myself. That is, that is the one important thing. And you take these things, uh, we have to suffer forever because this, this, this wrong thing. This is a wrong um, understand. That means a deluded mind always create this kind of uh, men mental states. If the mind is aware of this impermanent nature and non-self nature, never arise this kind of mental states. Mind is not aware at that moment. But once mind get the momentum in these unwholesome states, it goes to a certain uh, level. So after that, when you understand, oh, I, I fall into an unwholesome mental state, oh, I, I, uh, my emotions get uh, the, the, the unwholesome. So at that moment, you have to, you should not uh, try to hate to th those mental states. You have to be kind to your mind. Mind is not yours. It is a natural process. You have to be kind, soft and gentle to your, those me the mental state arise before. Just you have to kind to yourself. You have to kind to your body and mind. It is a part of nature. You should not try to control it. You should not, not try to make it better. Be kind, soft and gentle. That is wholesome mind. You have, to, you have to follow that wholesome mind, not try to correct things. Correcting mind means you take the, the position, the, the authority, to you, the, the mental states arise before. You take the responsibility. No, you are not existing here. Once you take responsibility, you are deluded again. <laughs> you fall into the pit again. So next time you, you fell again. So you have to let go that unwholesome the thinking. That is delusion. Because delusion, this um, the greed, hatred arise. Can I just ask finally, this is sort of the end of this, I think. Um, so uh, well, I think what I'm, I'm getting at, sometimes we can recognise patterns, like a, a recurring 
is it, I, I guess it is helpful from what you're saying to recognise this is just a pattern. Yeah. The poor old mind yeah. has brought this stupid thing up again. Uh, and if you can, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. Is so, it? Yeah, only thing, if you can understand which object your mind take as permanent and mine, if you can think wisely and cut off that one, in the, 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 that is that is vipassana. That is how we have to think wisely and cut off that. Then your mind train not to take this that object as mine, because some objects we habitually take as mine and uh, myself, or it is permanent. It it, it is affecting my life, <laughs> so, so the, we take it as permanent. That is so. If we can identify. Which object make your mind that kind of obsessions? So the, the that kind of emotions arise in your mind. So then you can you can uh, uh, you are mindful in the next time when you are dealing with that object. Then you can control the mind. That not you control, but mind naturally they take the wholesome side and uh, the other the subside the unwholesome. Yeah. Bhante, then, is it correct to say that our, our whole existence is then just delusional? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is how Lord Buddha say this existence be the, be the exist yeah. based on delusion. Mm. So Lord Buddha say the, if you are mind not uh, associated with the delusion, it leads to the extinguishment of uh, the consciousness. Mm. Mm. The, the existence we define by the consciousness. If there is no consciousness, we don't want to, de to exist. <laughs> exist. Existence means we, we are conscious about something. Thank you. Um, Bante. So all this seems very ex abstract, and then we have to... Emotions happen so quickly, and it's very hard to detach ourselves. Who will teach us how to look at things so that we are able to put things down, to put negative emotions down, and realize that's an unwholesome emotion, unwholesome feeling? Is that what we try to get when we meditate? Or is, is there another way of how, how do we go about putting things down, not to worry? It is transient, how do we do it? Is it through meditation? Yeah, actually this meditation is uh, really starting from when you listen to this kind of Dhamma, that, that Dhamma means the, the, how Lord Buddha explained this body and mind, how it works. Uh, the, this uh, impermanent nature, non-self nature of it. We don't have a control on this mind, the karma driven the mind, mind. So if we have this understanding and you use it again and again when something happens in your mind or if you come to a, the emotional states of mind, you experience it. After that, if you think, oh, this thing happened, I don't have control, but this thing happened because I took this object in this way to take I, me, myself, or this is permanent. Actually, we don't think, but if we contemplate that oh this is a, this is a thing change always my mind also not fixed it arise uh, the these forms feelings perceptions arise depending on causes and conditions if we can uh, contemplate on the, the the that situation in that way and uh, you can be kind soft and gentle to your mind that is the wholesome way of practicing. That, that means you can uh, see the world in a different angle. Because if we take these things happen to me, or this, this is how my mind works, my, I, I am a deluded person. If you, then you take, you is exist. Can you understand? This is, the important thing is to understand this, this uh, way of seeing things. This uh, the perm we think things are permanent. W once it happened, it happens forever. If we if we clearly analyze, oh, this one come and go. Why should I worry? Then we can cut off and let go. The next thing is, 
I suffer this uh, my delusion or uh, th that person did this kind of understanding is wrong because there is no fixed personality anywhere within yourself also the mind states also not a fixed thing these are changing so if you have this understanding regarding your body and mind then you you have a soft attitude towards the whatever happening things so that is if you use this uh, teaching lord buddha's teaching that's uh, the four, four noble truths and this uh, dependent origination you have to study this one and keep in mind then you see your life in a different way so this is the starting point of the practice so then you you have a different attitude towards whatever thing you are experiencing in your day to day life so you can change the attitude once you change the attitude you you cultivate a different uh, 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 way of dealing with things that is uh, the the your verbal action bodily action and uh, your livelihood based you based on a different base that is kind of and gentle way of dealing with things so this uh, this mentality arises within yourself because you st start seeing things in a different way that is why the the view is important so you have to practice the view first you have to understand it and start using it then you see things are changing that is the first the meditation yeah the first part of the meditation so then you can go to the higher stages of uh, practice that means you can you can uh, the the stop your body and the five senses and go to the the other higher stages but you can start you have to start from here from first you have to understand this basic teachings and use it in your day to day life what happens uh, to the uh, arahats when in terms of uh, his relationship with consciousness yeah according to dhamma this consciousness arises depending on causes and conditions when there is no causes and conditions this consciousness doesn't arise lord buddha give an example so uh, this like like this uh, candle if if there is a wick and there is a wax and there is a heat then this kind of uh, flame arises but if there is no heat this flame don't arise if there is no wax this flame don't arise if there is no wick this flame don't arise so that's why lord buddha say this consciousness is like the flame if there is no if one of these conditions are totally extinguish then the flame extinguish so can we ask what happened to the the, the flame where it goes flame arise because causes and conditions but but arahats to have eyes and they to see objects i so so what happens yeah 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 the, the arahat means he not a person yeah arahat is a person who attain uh, the uh, full nirodha and he know how to attain nirodha nirodha means he total extinguishment but he has a determination to live in this world that's why he associate with this uh, uh, five sense world this is human body he live in this human body but he his wisdom faculty grows up to the he know how to totally extinguish everything he has already practiced he ha he has already achieved those mental states so he 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 is not deluded by he is not deluded as a common worldling because he went beyond this human world beyond means he, beyond this five sense world beyond this mental world and he went to the total extinguishment he know how to how to extinguish everything in in terms of uh, the dependent origination the yeah. uh, when contact 
happens between uh, the consciousness and the object, then there is a reaction for the deluded people. Yeah. So does it mean that uh, arahats then just don't have any reaction at all? No, no. Arahants have reaction because uh, we 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 name as a arahant, but the body belongs to this human world. The consciousnesses are belongs to the human world. This consciousness, this machine, work based on delusion. So even a, even a person become an arahant, he when he see an object, he has a feeling, he has a perception. Can you understand? Yeah, but the so he has an intention also, but he is not deluded by these these things. That means he, he, when it come to him, he has a authority to leave it alone. Whether it is useful, can use. Otherwise, he can let go. Or he can change the perception and get the things in a totally different way. So that's why Lord Buddha says, sometimes Arahant can, the, the a normal person say, oh, this is nice. Arahant can take as nice, oh, it is nice, and he can eat or drink. In the same way, he can, he can change the perception and say, oh, this is awful. I have to throw away. He can throw away. Because he can twist his, the perceptions. He knows this is a game. <laughs> so so he's, he, he's overcome his delusion. So he knows this perception is just because causes and conditions is arise. So for people deluded um, who are not enlightened, yeah. uh, the, uh, uh, because uh, people tend to, when they have contact, uh, they, uh, including myself particularly, uh, do react uh, with uh, three uh, mind states either pleasure yeah. or aversion yeah. or neutrality. Uh, so does it mean that Arahat just doesn't have uh, those type of uh, mind state? He's no, just, actually, uh, no, these mental state arise, but he has a control because he has the understanding. He is not deluded by whatever perception come to him. So he, he has a much... Uh, the, uh, it is a different uh, mental state. He is not just driven by the, his thoughts. That is, when we practicing meditation and go the, the practicing this path, you naturally cultivate this uh, 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 this kind of understanding or, or this kind of control within yourself. So then you are not just react at once. You have a, you keep a gap. So then you know how to, so if you are still deluded, if, you, if there is a gap, but still you are deluded, you do wrong thing. So you are, you are fall into the uh, unwholesome action. But the Arahant have a authority and he know the, the, what is the useful and what is wholesome and what is unwholesome. He can abandon things. But that, that seems to be um, uh, a little bit confusing to me because uh, presumably when uh, a person has reached arahathood, uh, he's reached uh, equanimity. And uh, equanimity, I understand, is defined as uh, uh, no aversion, no pleasure. It's just middle, middle way. Yeah. Uh, this is important to understand. Arahants is a is a natural arahant if we we name a human body and mind as arahant we should understand there is no personality we understand ourselves also as a personality we don't understand ourselves as a natural phenomena it arises depending on causes and condition and pass away there is no fixed personality can you understand? Arahant is also not a fixed personality. We try to understand Arahant as a fixed personality. That is our delusion. That is not Arahant's problem. <laughs> because we try to understand, we try to put a Buddha and uh, Arahants as a personalities. They are not personalities. They are also natural phenomena. Could, could
could I just say, perhaps for us mere mortals, that's the non-Arahans who, who are sitting here. One thing I picked up that you said and I thought was uh, uh, very important is that we practice kindness to ourselves and kindness to others. Is that sort of a message, plus our meditation, of course, to try and um, understand? I just w wondered whether that was a good message. Yes, yes, actually. Because kindness, this loving kindness or the, the metta, is an important part of our practice because uh, uh, we lose metta because we take these objects as I, me, myself, the internal and external. So that is the that's why the if you um, uh, if you practice right view, right intention naturally arises. Right intention means uh, non-harming thoughts, non-ill-will thoughts, and non-sensual thoughts. That means see, there is uh, that is loving kindness, non-harming and non-ill-will thought means that is loving kindness. So if you are practicing loving kindness, means you are practicing the the wholesome thoughts so it is it is the right way so if you practice the right view naturally you fall into this this mentality because you see things as not i me myself these things arise depending on causes and conditions then you see the external people the, the external the, the 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 bodies and minds also work in the same way because these um, the mental states arise be depending on causes and conditions. Their bodily actions arise depending on causes and conditions. So you say in the same way you know they in my body and mind also don't have a control. It runs by causes and conditions. External bodies and minds also run by causes and conditions. Then you naturally you have a kindness, softness, and gentleness towards themselves. So that is how this samma sankapa arises because. If you are practicing samma ditti, naturally samma sankapa arise. Uh, the question of this difference between an ordinary uninformed being and an arahat, Buddha did say that uh, we have five aggregates yeah. of arising, yeah. but arahats have five aggregates, yeah. but not thinking or arising. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> A, because it uh, not, not take as I me myself, <laughs> no clinging. So that's why he can play with these things. Because when we are living in this world, the, the, even Arahant playing, living in this world, he has to deal with uh, the all five senses and mind, with other people's uh, the uh, minds also. Yeah. They are bodily action, verbal action. So they are dealing with the, in that understanding because he has a, the, the wisdom faculty, grown wisdom faculty. He knows what, what is going on within himself and what in the, the other people's mind. But he has a better control. Bhante, this is a question on near-death experience. You mentioned just now that uh, with a near-death experience, people, something raised above the body. The five senses left, the five senses stay with the body. So from what's been heard and hear and read in documentations, yeah. Some kind of a senses rise above the body, yeah. and you can see what's happening there. So, yeah. what is that sense? Is that consciousness? But consciousness, from what your definition is, is linked to the body. So, it, unless consciousness rise above the dead body, and it, and it's the mind consciousness that sees what's happening down there, or when a person also related when a person dies, what is it a mind consciousness or is it some kind of a mind that goes to the next life? So there are two questions here. With the near-death experience, what leaves the body that you can see? What's happening? And then when a person dies, what leaves the body and goes to the next life? Yeah, the, the thing is, the, the, when the, the, according to the Dhamma, this mind is a, a stream of consciousnesses, mind consciousnesses, arise depending on causes and conditions. Because there is a upadana, there's a the 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 takings. So when this body stops, mind go to a different realm, different existence. Can you understand? It mind goes to a different existence. It is continuing. There is no gap. When this the consciousness belongs to this body stops, mind consciousness, it go it arises in, 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 in a different place, in a different realm, and exists. 
but this mind always associate with five senses therefore they, that that uh, body also have the five senses can you understand six senses six senses six, senses. six my, with mind sense yes so that is how it works uh, but that realm is can't see by the humans but they can see human well so that is that is what scientists try to understand what, where this consciousness is so it, it, the, the humans can't see it but they can see the human world and they can listen to what they are talking and what they are doing they can see so that is a different different the uh, different existence that is that is what we can say this is a different realm so these things uh, uh, the human uh, body and mind can't perceive it that is the only thing can't can't uh, uh, see it or touch it this kind of difference we have because that is a limitation of our senses can you understand it is a limitation of our senses and they have a light body they can travel everywhere within within seconds they can go very far <laughs> so that's why they, if you read these ndes they they clearly say once they go there they don't want to come back here but if they have obligations they come back so they say they can remember their children their wife their house so they have to they have to do their his work so that is what that is what lord buddha say upadana pachya bhavo bhav pachya jati because people have these attachments they have a living room so that's why they come back to uh, this five sense world or whatever world they want to go because that is their mental attachments how they attach that is how mind works so when we keep reading this end is very very clear why they come back <laughs> because they they have obligations they they have attachments <laughs> otherwise they they feel actually really comfortable and nice place they don't want to come back this body is very heavy and troublesome and we have many many aches and pains but there's no aches and pains very nice but they come because they have obligations <laughs> attachments 